Good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to tell you a bit about the token auction that we at Baldwin's are having on the 5th of October at 10 o'clock Wednesday, uh, just over a month's time. The collection we are selling is the Patrick Dean collection. Patrick Dean collected tokens in the early 1970s. He stopped and then he started collecting them again from about 2005 on. Um, the collection is in two parts. A very small part, the first part which is 17th century tradesmen's tokens of Devon. The reason we've got those is Patrick comes from Devon and indeed still lives there, as I speak now, uh, and he collected the local tokens of, of, of his county, of where he lived. 17th century tokens were struck from about 1655 to about 1675, when there was no small change, so people really needed small change to do day-to-day -day transactions, you know, buying bread, buying a pint of milk, buying a beer. Uh, and if they handed in a sixpence or shilling, they needed small change given back to them. There wasn't any uh, because of the Civil War had all gone, and uh, so people made their own tokens. They made them quite visually so people could see where they needed to take them to have them exchanged for the regal issue coinage. So you get lots of lovely images of the pub's name on a, on a, on a token, like the bull's head or the St. George and Dragon. And lots of other visual things like uh, the, 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 the guild arms to which the trader belonged, like the grocer's arms, or the haberdasher's arms, or the salter's arms. Uh, every single village in Britain had people issuing tokens, so they're very collected, not just Devon, but the whole country, every county. But this is probably one of the best collections of Devonshire tokens ever to be sold. The, were, the, the, the Norweb collection was probably slightly bigger, but the British Museum had a whole lot of these. So this is probably the, the next largest collection of 17th century tradesmen's tokens of uh, Devon to be sold. The second part of the auction are 18th century tradesmen's tokens. Uh, this is very much the larger part of the collection. There's something like nearly 2,000 tokens. You can see here just a few trays I've brought out. These are English halfpennies. Um, there are lots of them. Now, I'm just going to explain to you a bit about 18th century tradesmen's tokens. I'm sure some of you will know all about them, but there might be some of you who don't. In the 1780s and 1790s, we were at war with France. Uh, the price of copper went up and the, the regal issue of copper coinage sort of vanished. Now, this caused a lot of hardship because um, Everything was conducted, all small transactions conducted in, in coppers. You bought your bread for a penny, halfpenny, as I said, you bought your beer for a penny. And you know, if you went to a pub with a shilling and wanted some change, the publican simply couldn't give it to you. So what, what was to happen? Well, in 1788, in Anglesey, in Wales, near a little village called Amloch, they hit a, a very rich... Uh, vein of copper. And it was on a farm called Paris Farm on the side of a mountainside and uh, a consortium got together, head by a chap called Williams, and they started mining it. Now they thought, why can't we pay our miners with the copper that we're, the, with, that we're mining? Now the problem with this, they couldn't copy the regal issue because that would be forgery, that would be counterfeiting, and they'd be hanged. So they hit upon the idea of having the same weight as a regal halfpenny or a penny, but calling it a token, i.e. it could be cashed in for the regal issue. And in that way, they got around the counterfeiting laws. So they started making these coins. This was in Wales, so they chose a very nice um, Welsh emblem. They had a druid's head on one side and the name of the company, the initials on the other side, the Paris Mine Company, because it was Paris Mountain on which the, the, this, this uh, high-grade copper vein was found. So that was in 1788. Uh, everybody suddenly saw how they got round the problem of no small change. So suddenly, in the 17, early 1790s, the whole country had merchants making 
their own money to give a small change. And because they couldn't copy the regal issue, it wasn't, it wasn't the normal copper change with the head of George III on one side and Britannia on the other. It was whatever they cared to put on it. And then, theoretically, it was a token of the regal coin that you could be cashed in. In fact, no one did cash them in because they're actually bullion coinage and they're worth a halfpenny worth of copper or a penny worth of copper or whatever. So that was the situation in the early 1790s. Throughout the kingdom, Great Britain and Ireland, you had merchants issuing their own uh, copper change. They tend to have advertising on it and, and, and things that make it acceptable, like they'd put Nelson's head on it or Britannia on it, just so it looked fairly official. Um, all sorts of things started happening then. People realised the, the propaganda potential of the circulating coin. So um, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of unrest at the time. Uh, a chap called uh, Spence decided he, didn't, he, wanted, uh, he wanted the abolition of the monarchy and nationalisation, nationalisation of land, which, as you can imagine, didn't go down very well. And he issued all sorts of tokens um, pushing this, this, this uh, concept. For instance, like the head of George III conjoined with that of an ass and things like that. Uh, he went to prison several times for sedition, um, but uh, he produced a very large series of tokens you know, pushing this socialist view, especially as you'd had France had become a republic and, of course, you'd had America that become a republic a few years previously. So it was quite a sort of... The, 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 the government at the time was really scared of these socialist views, you know, the abolition of monarchy. And you also had people um, thinking, oh, I'd like to issue a coin of my own. So they, they, they had their own coin struck. They became collected at the time because, as I say, every single market town in England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales had someone producing them. Uh, and so someone thought, oh, there isn't one for such and such a place. We'll make it and sell it to a collector. So you had, you had these private issues being issued as well. And then you had people just selling tokens because everyone so needed small change, they made them slightly underweight. Uh, and they'd go around shopkeepers and say, do you need any small change? This is what I'm issuing. It's got Britannia on one side and Admiral Howe on the other. So it'll look sort of fairly official and it was slightly underweight and they'd pocket the, the, the underweight bit. But people were so desperate for small change. So this is what Patrick's collection is. It, it's probably one of the biggest collections to come to the market for many years. But the, 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 probably the most interesting aspect is of where it came from. A lot of his collections are ex-cocaine. Francis Stewart, or I think S. Cocaine, collected um, coins from about 1880 to the Second World War. And uh, he put together what was the biggest collection of, of 18th century traders tokens ever put together. And he, and he collected a whole lot of other things as well, but specifically 18th century tokens. And just after the war, 1946, Baldwin's bought his collection for him. They'd started auctioning things, they'd sold the bank tokens already. And they were having some repair work done, uh, I think it was probably bomb, bomb damage that they were repairing, in 1946, and four or five of the cabinets went missing. I don't know exactly what happened, but nothing really, nothing, nothing was said about it. And suddenly, in about 2005, it appears as though these tokens were coming onto the market, because certainly... Certainly, for instance, the Irish tokens here, which are all ex cocaine, and you can tell they're ex cocaine because they've all got his very nice little tickets that say where it came from, who it was bought from, and at, at what price. Um, and these things have never been on the market before, and they, you can trace them all back to 1920s, 30s, and 40s, and then suddenly they appear in 2006. So they are very likely coins that, 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 that Baldwin's lost in 1946, but we don't know specifically, but very likely. Anyway, we are now having the chance to sell them. They're here. Um, they're, they're very collectible because Francis um, Cocaine collected these in, as I say, 1900, 1920s, 1930s. So a lot of these coins haven't been on the open market for a hundred years and more. So anyway, that is, that, that's this collection. The first part, which is going to be the pennies, 
and then the halfpence and farthings as well of Ireland, Scotland and Wales. And the next sale, or two sales, I'm not sure yet, are going to be the English halfpence. But this is the, the first part of getting the pennies and the Irish, Welsh and Scottish halfpence and farthings. So uh, if you want to hear more about these tokens, do subscribe to our channel. There'll be more on the tokens as they come out in the various sales we have.